Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and I'm just continuing immediately after I finished recording the last video where I'm just putting together this little series where I'm trying to familiarize myself with the XR2 Raven Star all over again and get familiar with tools like Transex, Burn Time Calculator, and just generally get comfortable with Orbiter again. So in the last video, we undocked from the ISS. Uh, we got our Transex plan set up to go out to the moon, and we got a ways out. We did a mid-course correction, and that's kind of where things are at right now. So let me go ahead and switch to the full screen and pick up where we left off. Currently, we're on track to arrive at the moon at an altitude of about 30 kilometers, and we'll have an off-base distance currently showing um, about a kilometer, but as you can see, that number is uh, tending downwards, which is, which is good for us. But we can't really rely on it too much just yet because we still have a ways to go. So our time to periapsis at the moon is currently 78,000. So I'm gonna warp time forward until we're at, let's say 40,000, and then we'll take a look at our numbers again and see how things are. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna time warp forward until PET is about 40,000. All right, there we are, about 40,000. So let's uh, take a look and see how things are. So in the time that we have warped forward, we can see that our focus PED has gone uh, subterranean. And that kind of messes up our, uh, messes things up a little bit because we can't quite tell, you know, how we are with our base alignment. So let's uh, let's do another quick uh, quick maneuver just to fix everything and this one should be hopefully quicker and shorter than the last one. Uh, first thing we'll want to do before I forget is uh, I like to reset the date and then uh, make sure that I put the date out into the future. So currently it's 7206. Let's put it at 7260, um, something like that. 7250 will go. That should give me enough time to set up the maneuver and still have time to get aligned and everything. So first of all, we'll start with outward, or rather, uh, prograde. And we'll go down to just a super setting and uh, go down to a fine setting. That is bringing up the, the hypothetical PED. So let's just see what happens. Well, that seems like a lot of prograde to me. So if I put in... You know, so let's let's just say what happens if I bring up my altitude to like 30 kilometers. So that's going to cost me 53 prograde, and my off-plane distance doesn't really seem like it's improved. So I feel like we can probably do better with um, outward or plane change. Maybe maybe outward. So let's go to the super setting. Let's go to the fine rather. And so with just three meters per second. Uh, we've already improved our, uh, you know, our cost by a factor of 10. You know, we went from, what was it, 30 or 40 meters a second down to 3, and we've achieved the same thing. So let's, um, yeah, so we have our minimum altitude about where we want. Now, it didn't help our off-plane at all, but let's uh, keep that in mind. So I'm gonna set, I'm gonna use outward just to set the minimum minimum altitude, and I'll put it at 20. And now let's check what happens with a bit of plane change at the super setting. So plane change is uh, helping our our off plane, hugely helping our off, off plane. So I think between between plane change and the outward, we'll get what we want. And let's see which way these numbers are going. So they're going up. So if I undercut it a bit like that, then hopefully they will trend in the right direction. So uh, let's plan on burning that maneuver. And then hopefully anything else we need to do can be done, you know, just manually by tapping translation thrusters. So let's go ahead and go to, uh, let's do update while we're here and turn on auto center. 
and I won't bother with burn time calculator for this one because um, it's just for well yeah why not why not use our tools so let's get the maneuver from transx and I'm gonna do the burn in just a few more seconds here burning in two one zero and it was so quick that uh, like we didn't even notice it. In fact, it cut it short, so I'm gonna have to do this. Rotation. Translation. I think it just automatically cuts the burn short by like 3.5 meters per second, which means on a burn that's as small as that one was, um, burn time calculator effectively does nothing. <laughs> so let's go to the maneuver, shut it off and check on the encounter so it's looking pretty good so we're minimum altitude is 12 off base is negative 4 but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a little bit more forward translation to make up the difference that um, burn time calculator didn't really do and we'll get our numbers more where we want them to be and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that's more where I want them to be about minimum altitude of 20 off plane of negative 1.2 and getting closer to zero. Sounds good to me. So let's cut our PET in half one more time. Go down to 20,000. And then I'll look at my numbers over there once we get there. About right here. By now I'm hoping things are pretty stable. So we have an off plane of 18 now and minimum altitude of 66. So let's see, we're now um, in, we now have orbit moon. So the moon is now the strongest reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and go prograde to the moon. And now I'm just gonna bounce the translation thrusters a bit to see if I can get the minimum altitude and off plane more where I want. Okay, using just two, so thrusting the vessel up, that's getting the off plane down. And that number is going up, so I'm thinking I'm gonna overshoot a bit in this direction. Yeah, by maybe that much, because I don't really know how fast it's going. And then minimum altitude is uh, 67, and currently we're prograde to the moon. So if I do an inward burn, it's gonna bring down my minimum altitude. So I'll do that by pressing one. And that it's having a small impact on the off-plane distance, but it's impacting it in a direction that I'm okay with. And we'll bring that minimum altitude down to uh, 20 kilometers, like that. Okay, so we're pretty well squared away now. Let's uh, cut the PET time one more time go down to 10,000 and then take a look at our numbers again. And that's 10,000. So let's go prograde again. And our minimum altitude did increase a bit. So we can easily take care of that. And once again, we'll just use a bit of uh, inward to take out bring down the minimum altitude closer to 20. I'm gonna leave it there for now because I still wanna try to correct this off plane a little bit. It, it's not much of a difference and it would be easy to correct just when we do our, uh, when we do our breaking burn at the, at the base, we can just offset our nose a little bit and that'll take care of that. But it's, I think it's easier to do it now and that number is getting closer to zero, so let me go a bit over in that direction by about two kilometers, and hopefully by the time it's done correcting, it'll be close to zero and stay there. So a little bit more on the inward. Go with that. And we'll cut our PET in half one more time. Go down to 5,000, and that'll probably be the last one. It's about right 
here, go prograde again. And yeah, you can see our numbers are more stable now that we're in pretty close to the moon. Turn off the autopilot. And we're pretty close to 5,000. So minimum altitude I'm happy with. Off base is good enough. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll get it a little closer to zero. But I think we're good there. All right, let's bring up burn time calculator on this side and we're going to switch to mode periapsis we're still um, and let's do circularization so we want to begin that burn in 5,000 seconds so let's go down to 2500 and just check our data one more time okay we're there let's go prograde and check transects. So our off plane is 700 meters, which is nothing, which is virtually nothing, and it's tending toward zero, so it's getting closer to perfect. And the minimum altitude, I don't care as long as it's, you know, reasonable, it's fine. I'm not going to mess with a few meters here and there. So we're good. Uh, let's check burn time calculator. So the burn is in 2300. So let's go down to let's go down to 1500 and just take another look at things. They shouldn't be any different than they are now. Graphical glitch. Okay, and the off plane is uh, not really changing very much. So as long as I'm here, let me just go ahead and uh, put in a couple control thrust to get it closer to zero because it's just not changing very fast at this point so we'll go with that and maybe just a kick of inward we'll go with that all right let's get ready to do our lunar orbit insertion burn let's go to retrograde and bring up burn time calculator on this side. I'm not sure if it will engage if it's not up. Anybody happen to know? We could probably actually do a better uh, orbit insertion by using a transex maneuver because burn time calculator, it's it doesn't align the vessel, so it's just we're just going to do this burn purely retrograde, which is not perfect for this large of a burn. That's not perfect. In fact, when I get when we get close to the time to the burn, I'm gonna actually turn off retrograde, go to rotation, rotation, and I'm gonna try to maybe control the burn a little bit to get it more circular. And I have to think about how this works. I believe you start with a bit of out, and you work your way in. I think. I believe in order to get a, a better circular orbit, you have to be slightly off this direction and you work your way in. I can't remember, it might be the other way around. But I think this is right. Okay, burning in one, zero, here goes the burn. And let me see here, let me watch my periapsis. So if I go this way, my periapsis isn't changing. So maybe it was maybe it was the other way. So if I want to say my PEA, I want to try to hit it around 20 kilometers. Start working my way out. I did that completely wrong but we're pretty much at periapsis now so let me go ahead and bring down the apoapsis a little bit translation mm, it's 
not what I have in mind. And I guess I'm just so far past periapsis at this point. All right, uh, and I don't want to fiddle with that anymore because we're pretty low. 11 kilometers is, re is fairly low. All right, let's bring up uh, base sync on this side. See how we did. Let's target Brighton Beach. And yeah, we're only uh, two kilometers off at the moment. So, all right, let's think about what's left to do here. So we're closing in on Brighton Beach at the moment. Let me display orbit plane. And um, looks like we will be landing at night. It's a bit unfortunate. I didn't time that better, but I didn't think to take into consideration the time on the 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 daylight day night terminator on the moon. So it's okay. But yeah, I believe we're getting closer to the to Brighton Beach. Alright, so the next thing I want to look for is uh, whenever we cross any of these points, I will try to bring down the off-base distance. And then, so we're going to have to go all the way around to this point, basically, before we can do our deorbit burn. So let's go prograde. Actually, I probably should have just left it retrograde, because eventually we're going to have to do a retrograde breaking burn. Okay, so if I want to align the base, I'm going to need to burn normal plus, which means up. And that's it tells me here that this is going to be plus when I cross this point. And if I were going to be using the full power of the main engines, I would be doing that. Uh, actually, I guess it doesn't tell me. It just tells me that I, I need to do two delta V worth of burn. So however long I think that's going to take. Does it give you the time on here? I thought it did. No, it just tells you the time to the node. So when we get down to, you know, like 10 seconds, I'll start just using translation thrusters. And we're getting close to that point. Make sure we're in translation. translation. And again, I want to translate up. Turn off the autopilot. And that's just bringing down that off base distance. And it, it doesn't need to be zero. It doesn't matter because the base itself is, you know, probably a few hundred meters wide. So having it zero doesn't really accomplish anything. It's not like it's not like plain alignment or DT min. OK, so let's go around to uh, this point and we will check our distance uh, one more time actually we'll have two more opportunities to check it but we'll check it again when we get here even though I don't think it's going to matter anymore and hopefully we don't crash into anything because we're now coming down to okay we're fine we didn't hit anything so we'll go around here and now so there the our off base distance did change you know so it can happen but let's go to the retrograde position and we need a 4 delta v probably doesn't do a lot of good to really bother with it because once we do the braking burn it's going to change the off base distance anyway but i don't know i just i like to try to keep everything dialed in at every opportunity so time to node's 10 seconds, turn off the autopilot. This time we need to burn down. Tells us that there it's a negative, so down. So that's going to be uh, a translation with eight thrusters coming out of the top, pushing the vessel down. And... Uh, Good enough right there because it's going to change anyway 
All right, now the next thing I'm going to look for is my deorbit burn. And I will do the deorbit burn when my distance to Brighton Beach stops counting up and starts counting down. And I expect that to happen approximately right there. So we'll warp time forward. And I'm just watching that distance. Another place I can watch that is on map MFD. So the distance here should be the same as that. And it looks like it is or close to it. But when these numbers stop counting up, it means I'm halfway around, and then when they start counting down, it means I'm now getting back closer to the base. And I know just it'll be approximately when I'm straight across from there. So should be coming up on that time pretty soon, and we'll do our deorbit burn and then call it the end of this part of the series, and we'll save the landing for the next part. Should be coming up soon. I don't have the number memorized. Let's go into the retrograde position. And let me go back to real time and bring up orbit MFD. So 36, 37, so they're still counting up. 51, still counting up. 82, going up. 95, going up. Three seventy, four hundred, forty-two, forty-three, still going up. Forty. Now they're going down. All right. So a little bit of main engine to bring down the periapsis on the other side, and I'm going to bring it down to one point five because I don't actually know how high the mountains are. That's a bit lower than I said I was going to go, but uh, we'll, we'll see if it works. Maybe we'll have a spectacular crash into a mountainside somewhere. Mm -hmm. All right, let me switch camera views to the overlay. That's going to wrap it up for this part. And if you like the video, please do hit that like button and stay tuned for the next part where I plan on uh, landing at Brighton Beach, hopefully. This is the XR2 Raven Star. It's a bit more delicate than the Delta Glider, but uh, fingers crossed we'll get down without crashing. I will see you in the next part.